So we're trying to understand the Schrodinger equation solution for the hydrogen atom. Okay, the hydrogen atom is schematically described here. You simply have a nucleus uh, with a positive charge, and then there's a single electron uh, which is in the periphery of that nucleus. Okay, so in a prior video we have set up uh, the Schrodinger equation. We actually have said that there's a, a coordinate transformation in which uh, we solve this expression using uh, spherical polar coordinates, which are simply the distance of the electron to the nucleus and then to angles. Okay. And then in this video, we actually explain what the quantum numbers uh, that appear in the solutions of those uh, that Schrodinger equation look like. Okay, so again, the solutions are going to be the energy and the wave function, and there's uh, they are going to contain some quantum numbers, as we have seen in other cases. In this case, the motion is three-dimensional, so that means that you're going to have three quantum numbers. Okay. So the quantum numbers are going to be called n, l, and m sub l. Now, there's something uh, very interesting about these uh, quantum numbers, which have, we haven't seen in uh, prior examples. And that is that the value of some of these quantum numbers depend on the value of other quantum numbers. Okay, So these quantum numbers are not fully independent of each other, okay, as we're going to see in a couple of minutes. Uh, uh, the value of L, for example, depends on the value of N, and the value of M sub L will depend on the value of L. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, N is something that we call the principal quantum number. Okay, and the principal quantum number uh, has no restriction other than it has to be an integer number. Okay, so n uh, is going to be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to infinity. Okay, so this seems to be a straightforward quantum number. We will see a little bit later on that n uh, determines uh, the size of the wave function. Okay, so that electron is going to be uh, in the periphery of the nucleus but it can be at various distances from the nucleus. Okay, it has a probability of being at different various distances from the nucleus. And n determines exactly whether uh, uh, the electron prefers to be closer to the nucleus or farther to the nucleus. That's uh, the size of the wave function. Okay, it also determines uh, the shape in the radial, radial direction. Okay, so as, as you move away from the nucleus, you can interrogate, well, well, how is the shape of the wave function? And we will see that n determines whether you have nodes or no nodes along the radial direction. And finally, n also determines the energy of the solution, okay, the energy of the state. Okay? Uh, but for, for now, we are going to uh, say that there's no restriction in the value of n. n can be uh, any integer number from 1 all the way to infinity. Now, let's move to the uh, second quantum number, L. This is called the angular momentum uh, quantum number. And something interesting here is that the value of L depends on the value of n. Okay, so first you have to specify what the value of n is, and once you know that, you will know what are the possible allowed values for l. Okay, so uh, as a, the rule is that there's going to be n values of l. Okay, and l can vary from 0 to n minus 1. Okay, so uh, for example, if n is equal to 4, okay, that means that L can have 4 values for different values, and those values are going to be from 0 to 3. Okay, so it will be 0, 1, 2, and 3. Right? Or if the value of n happens to be equal to 3, then what will happen is that L will have 3 possible values, and the values will go from 0 to 3 minus 1 is 2, from 0 to 2, then that means that those values are going to be 0, 1, and 2. Okay, so again, uh, this is something uh, that we haven't seen before. There's a dependence of uh, this quantum number on the value of uh, the principal quantum number. Okay? Now, uh, what is the function of, of uh, the value L? Well, L depends, uh, determines the shape of the wave function along an angular direction. Okay, so uh, it will tell us if uh, this wave function has some sort of uh, spherical symmetry, like if this is the nucleus and that is the electron, whether the wave function of the electron uh, is spherically, spherically symmetric around the nucleus, or whether it can have some angular variation in which you might have some lobe shapes, and so forth. Okay, so that's uh, what this uh, L does. It determines uh, the shape of the wave function in uh, the angular direction. Okay, the last uh, final quantum number here that we're going to see is, is called the um, magnetic quantum number m sub l. 
and m sub l depends on the value of l. Okay? So uh, m sub l can have two l plus one values that go from minus l to plus l going through zero, and it also has to be an integer number. Okay, so let's take a value of l equal to two. Okay, that will mean that you will have five possible values of m sub l, and there will be minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, and plus two. Okay, if l happens to be equal to one, then you're gonna have three values, uh, three possible values of m sub l, and they're going to be minus one, zero, plus one. Okay, so again, uh, the uh, magnetic quantum number depends on the angular momentum quantum number. Okay, MAD says the uh, angular momentum quantum number depends on the principal quantum number. Okay, the function of m sub l is simply, uh, it tells you the orientation of that particular wave function against, uh, in space, against uh, an, ar an ar axis that you have to define. Okay, right, so what we're going to do next is using these definitions for the dependencies of the quantum numbers on each other, we're going to build a table for the first few possible solutions or combinations of quantum numbers that solve this zone equation. Let's see if we, we can actually uh, learn something of interest there. All right, so notice that uh, uh, we're going to examine here the uh, n is equal to one, two, and three solutions, and then we'll see the possible values of L, and then the possible values of M sub L. And those will be the uh, first few solutions to the zone equation. All right, so uh, let's make um, the value of n equal to one. Okay. If the value of n is equal to 1, then, then that means that uh, you're going to have uh, one value of L, which is going to go from 0 to n minus 1. Okay, So the one possible value of L for n is equal to 1 has to be 0. Okay, That's the only possible solution. And m sub L okay, is going to have 2 plus L um, values uh, that go from minus L to plus L. Okay, so 2 plus uh, 2 L plus 1 values will be 2 times 0, 0 plus 1, 1, that have to go from minus L to plus L, but L is 0. So the only possible solution for L is, it, is equal to 0. Okay, so this is the absolute first uh, possible combination that solves the Schrodinger equation. Okay, so uh, one of the solutions of the Schrodinger equation, actually the one of the lowest energy, will be the one in which the combination of quantum numbers will be 1, 0, 0. Okay? All right, so let's uh, uh, then go to uh, quantum number, principal quantum number two, and then examine the possible values of L. All right, so uh, remember that L can have n values. Okay, so if n is equal to two, L will have two values. And the values of L go from zero to n minus one. If n is equal to two, then the values are going to be zero to one. Okay, so the two possible values of L are going to be zero all right, now uh, we can here and say, well, for these possible values of L, what are the possible values of M sub L? Okay, so, well, we know that when L is equal to zero, there's only one value of M sub L, which is zero. Okay, but now we have that L can also be equal to one. Okay, so we know that there's two L plus one values. Okay, so that is gonna be two times one, two plus one, three, three possible values of M sub L. Okay, and the values are gonna go from minus L to plus L going through zero, so minus one, zero, one. Okay, so here you have uh, new solutions, minus one, zero, plus one. Okay, we usually don't write this plus one. We usually write minus one, zero, and one. Okay, so uh, we're starting to build more solutions. Okay, so the first possible solution will be this one, then you have uh, this solution right here, but then you have one solution like this, another solution like that, and two, one, one. Okay, all those are the possible solutions that you have uh, for the Zonger equation. And these numbers code what the wave function would look like. Okay, there's a one more. All right, I'm going to uh, erase this. Okay, and we're going to go it for n is equal to 3. All right, so let's uh, see what the values of L could be for n is equal to 3. Again, uh, for the last time, uh, there's n values of L. So if n is equal to 3, we're going to have 3 values of L and the values range from zero to n minus one. So the three values will be zero, one, and two, okay, which we can write right here. Zero, one, and two. All right, for each one of these L's, you're gonna have possible values of M sub L. Okay, so for uh, 
L is equal to zero. There's two L plus one values. That means that there's only one value, and that value has to be zero. For one, uh, you have two L plus one values, so there's three that are minus one, zero, and one. Okay, so minus one, zero, and one. And then for L is equal to two, two L plus one, which are the possible ends of L values, would be five, two uh, by two, four plus one, five. And again, they have to range from minus L to plus L going through zero. So they will go from minus two to plus two going through zero. So the possible values are equal to minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two. Okay, so like this, we can continue to build a table until you get to n is equal to infinity. But you can see, you can get uh, uh, the gist of it with this explanation. Now, this might look very confusing to uh, some of you, but things become a little easier uh, when we actually introduce a mapping of this L quantum number into letters, okay, which is something that is uh, used. Okay, so when L is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth, we actually call these wave functions uh, uh, S, P, D, F, and then alphabetical from then on. Okay, so uh, essentially what you have right here is as follows. Notice that this we can call it S, okay, this we can call S, P, and these we can call S, P, D. Okay, so what this tells us is that, well, the first solution uh, for the uh, electron in the Haring atom uh, is something that we call a wave function that we're going to call 1s, and there's only one of those, which has a, a value of n sub l equal to zero. Then another possible solution would be something that we call 2s, which only has one, uh, it's only one function. Another possible solution is something that we call 2p, but 2p have, has three functions, okay? And the only difference in the three functions is the m sub l value, which that means that that's the, just the orientation of that function in space. And then uh, uh, when you have an n is equal to 3, then you can have a, a simple uh, a function called, that is going to be called 3s. You're going to have three possible uh, functions that are called 3p, and then you're going to have five possible functions that are called uh, 3d. Okay? So uh, you can see that there's a, a a correlation here between these quantum numbers and what you know as orbitals, okay? And we will explore what this connection, is next, what this connection means when we study uh, how the wave functions actually look like. Again, but these are just uh, uh, the three S orbital. is just a way to nicely code what the pot, what the uh, allowed values for uh, the quantum numbers are uh, in that orbital for the Hadron atom.